and we know you're busy. So anything to help you work smarter, not harder, that's what we're here to do. Is pineapple okay on pizza? All right, Neely, so I'm really excited about this topic. Me too. All about PowerPoint, and just from my own experience of traveling across the country and doing PowerPoint presentations. All the time. As well as webinars. I've learned a lot about what to do to make them powerful. And as a small business owner, you already probably use Microsoft Office for Word and Excel for a variety of needs, but today we're gonna hone in on PowerPoint. And guess what? What? I got a killer pizza PowerPoint to show you and you, you today. Let's dive in. Let's Come do on. it. All right, Emma. So you're going to take us through your top 10 tips to really wow your audience with your presentations. Let's just go ahead. What's your first tip? So first off, prepare a script. And one thing you want to be mindful of with the script is not to sound like you're reading a script. Right. Because then it just Organic, sounds like, robotic. Like, like if this was a script, we'd be talking like this. Don't do that. What you want to do is sound natural. But the script, what like the point... Like Emma. Just like me. <laughs> <laughs> but the script really helps you to organize your thoughts and get cohesive. And I suggest doing like bullet points. You don't need to write it out like you're a playwright. And the idea again is just to keep you organized. What are you gonna intro with? What's good to talk about in the middle of this seminar or webinar? And then what are you gonna conclude with? I always love a good agenda slide and a recap at the end. Nice, kind of just like high level overview. I'm gonna talk about this, the intro, I'm gonna talk about this. So I know an idea of what it is, mm -hmm. but again, not scripted, just a conversation yeah. guide, if you will. Or even something that's just gonna trigger your memory. Like maybe there's a great example or a story that you have and you just need like that one indicator, like celery. That would remind me of a story that we talked about yesterday. <laughs> there you have it. Just write celery, remind yourself of things, and you got it. <laughs> so next up, you want to keep your presentation pretty short and sweet. Uh, no yeah. offense to the declining attention spans of Americans and children everywhere. <laughs> But you wanna keep it short and sweet because you're delivering essentially just a point. So I'm gonna share an example in a little bit of a webinar I did, and it's about four ways to maximize your pizza shop's Instagram. And I break it down into just four ways. So everyone knows before they tune in, hey, I'm gonna get four digestible tips to take away from this, short and sweet. That's perfect. And there's a reason why like TED Talks are not hours long. They're just a short bit of time because our attention spans are only so much. And it's actually harder to get all of your thoughts into a confined bit of time, like a 10 minute presentation or a 20 minute presentation. Like we can talk on and on and on and ramble on, but that short and sweet helps us really get what we need out and effective. So totally. we're not lost. Absolutely. All right, so that was kind of your, your process and your main points. Let's, let's, can we dive into PowerPoint itself with those best practices? I was hoping you'd ask. So this brings me to kind of like tip number three, if you will, and it's pay attention to your fonts. I know that there's a lot to choose from. It kind of reminds me of when I go on Instagram and there's all the filters and it gets overwhelming right. and I go down a rabbit hole. As we um, do. And all of a sudden your photo doesn't even look real. Make sure your font are clear, concise, and think about having one that's on brand. I have an example here. Like I said, I do a lot of webinars, and this was a webinar I did uh, for pizza shops all across the US. And what we have at GoDaddy is a couple of branded fonts. Uh, so this is Rubik, as you can see here, and also chose a font size for the title side that's very just catches your eye. This can take up the whole page. And then throughout the presentation, um, definitely maintaining the Arial font for when we had text within and anything mm -hmm. that's more bold and branded, like I highlighted here, we it's back do to Rubik. Rubik. Yeah, and that's for every presentation and it stays on brand. So consider uh, a, a font that you wanna be consistent with across all of your presentations. And not only presentations, websites, social media, letter copies, ads, you name it. The more consistent you can be with your brand, right? The better off it is. Totally. So that's awesome. Fonts are super important, especially with your brand everywhere. What else can we really think about with the presentation itself? Yeah, so it's really tempting with PowerPoint. There's a lot of built-in themes, um, but one thing that I encourage you to do is have your own branded theme. So if you check it out here on the screen, 
back to the Four Ways to Maximize Your Pizza Shop's Instagram. Uh, we have this theme that we use here, but you can go through, there's a variety. This is within designs, by the way, in PowerPoint. And you can mix things up, but it's really good to just have something that's on brand. So I, whenever I go in and do another webinar, I come right back here and build out the new topic within this branded theme. So the other cool thing about this, having just the branded theme that you use here within design is you can also customize the text, mm -hmm. backgrounds, you can also do headings, links, so virtually everything, right? Exactly. Yeah. So in a similar fashion, you can even tweak the background here and the fonts used within the presentation. That makes it super helpful. So then you're not having to create a new, new slide, right? And then have to edit everything to your liking, new slide, edit the same thing over and over and over. That theme just does it all. Exactly. And we know you're busy. So anything to help you work smarter, not harder. That's what we're here to do. So. Speaking of saving time, uh, this segues nicely into the next tip for PowerPoint, and that's saving time with built-in layouts and templates. So I wanted to show you guys something here on PowerPoint, and especially because think about it, since everything is pre-designed for you, you don't have to worry about creating a layout from scratch, and you can just focus on making sure that the content of your presentation is top-notch. So check it out. If you go over to Insert, uh, you can actually access the layouts and all you have to do is click here and then from there you go into new slide to choose the actual layout from this drop down menu. Ta-da! <laughs> Look at all the options there. Yep. And then basically you just shortcut a lot of your, your, your workload and just choose a, a template that you like and then go. Exactly. All right. So this leads us into tip number six, which is all about alignment. So as you can imagine, the title side is the first thing that someone's gonna see, and it's really important that you stay consistent. And I would go with keeping it in the center. So as you can see with this title here, four ways to maximize your pizza shop's Instagram, centered. Would it look good down here, Neely? Not How really. about over here? Uh, not, not so, so much. much. <laughs> so, Jinx, so, you owe me a soda. <laughs> and similar to what we want to do with the title, also do with the logo and the brand. So for every presentation, we have GoDaddy Social right there, top, front, center. Also throughout the presentation, as I mentioned, being in the beginning, being consistent, short and sweet, cohesive, right. we have four ways to maximize the Instagram. So within that, there's gonna be an actual, check this out, for each way, it gets its own colorful cover slide for each of the four ways. And then the actual title, plan out your posting strategy, knows how it's centered and to the left. Yeah, I like so, it. And it's consistent throughout. So even when we go into one of my favorite topics, when we talk about hashtags, just a different color, but the alignment is the same. So that's super cool. It taught us a lot about the fonts and alignment. But one thing I'm noticing about your PowerPoint is you have some pretty good visuals there. What What's your secret? What images should we be using? Well, it's pretty easy to get visual and have fun with it with a topic like pizza. I know right? most of my presentations have like pictures on pictures on pictures on pictures. Is, is there one that's just too much? Yeah, so you don't wanna overdo it. And so for example here, I was talking about the importance of sharing behind the scenes at your pizza shop. And I have an example, I love this, the guys back there tossing. You ever able to do that? Pizza. No, I failed miserably. I worked at a pizza shop for a few years, like summers in between, you know, college and I loved working at the pizza shop. This is something I could never master, but what I love about this post and what this PowerPoint is doing is it's not overwhelming you with a ton of pictures per slide, but they do share like a quick little behind the scenes, almost like a storytelling of making pizza. So you got this dude showing off in the kitchen and then next up, I love the action shot of this photo of the sauce and then one more kind of from a different angle overseeing the toppings as they're putting them on. I'm getting hungry. Are you getting hungry? Oh, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Question for you. Is pineapple okay on pizza? Absolutely not. <laughs> I was going to try to just be fair and fit in, but I cannot stand fruit on pizza. It's like classic cheese. <sighs> Sorry, man. I'm team pineapple. But I like how they're doing a half and half here, you know? Yeah, yeah. so you get a half and I get a yeah. half. We can make it work. We can still be co-hosts. We can still be co-hosts. <laughs> Friends even. You can have your pineapple on this half. <laughs> 
So as you can see, the photos really brought to life the presentation. It brought to life our conversation about pizza. It and now I know did. how you feel about pineapple. And now I'm really hungry. <laughs> cut, can we just like cut? I don't need to eat. All right, so another thing to consider, and this might be hard to do, stick to one idea. Otherwise, it's gonna be too much information overload. You're gonna lose your audience. So I have an example here. Talking about user-generated content, and it has a great stat, I love this. 85% of consumers find visual, user-generated content more influential than brand photos or videos. Is that surprising to you? Not at all. Not at all. So you and taught me this before the episode. I did, he's a good listener. And so here we have a slice of pizza that was actually taken, the photo was taken by a happy customer. And then she tagged where she got the pizza at. It was like Goodfellas Pizza, recommend it. And so what Goodfellas can now do, simply repost it onto their Instagram, which is a great way to take advantage of user generated content. But the point of this PowerPoint slide is that it's not too much going on. It's one idea of user generated content easy to digest, just like this slice of pizza. Yeah, because on this slide, you're not going to have user generated content and how to use hashtags and all of this, because then the yes. your audience will just get super lost, just like you'll get super lost trying to talk to it. Yeah, it was really important in this whole layout and thinking about the theme that there were four ways to improve the Instagram and we needed to keep them very separate. All right, so I want to dive into tip number nine, which is all about creating and reusing slide masters. And why this would be beneficial for you is because it's gonna save you a lot of time. Having a slide master and reusing it will help you so you don't have to go into each individual slide and make an update. So let me show you a little bit more about what that looks like and starting with clicking view. Cool. So once you click view, have you ever done this before? I have not even went to the view tab. Oh my gosh, check it out, Neely. So then you go over to slide master and as you can see, I want to point out a few key elements here. So like I said, you don't have to go into each individual slide and update the logo or the page number. Speaking of page numbers, right here's a great example. This is on each page, so it's going to update itself versus you going into page number two. Every single time. Page number three. Yeah, totally. So once you're here, you can also insert a new layout. Cool. Yeah, so that's this button is going to be very helpful for you. And when you click on that, you get another new master title style that you can then edit to create, once again, something that's very specific to your theme and then reuse. And ultimately, it'll save you time. So it's kind of like a, a skeleton of your entire template. So you can add elements there, like your columns or anything else, and that'll be the layout. And then your theme goes on top of that to make it all pretty. Yep. I dig it. Yeah, and you can change the style. You can change the fonts. You can change it really anything that you have available to you in PowerPoint, and then it'll save in that master slide. And then you just reuse that every single time, so those changes are done. And then think about how much extra time you have to eat pizza. All right, so we're on our last tip, tip number 10. You've been saving out, this is the best one for last, I hope. Yeah, it's definitely the most fun. <laughs> All right, so what do you got for us? So one thing that is tempting is to add a bunch of animation to your slides. But I wanna warn you, you wanna use animation to a limit. Why? Why? Because I, I I go ham, like animations on animations. I'll show you why. I made this slide. This is why you wanna limit the animation. So check this out. Woo! All right, all right. Got a cool team picture. We're talking about planning out your posting strategy. But there's I, just there's, there's so much animation. too much. You sure? Animation going on. I know you enjoyed that, but for anyone else- It was a wild ride. <laughs> it comes off as not so professional, distracting. So just limit the use of doing animation. You can have a simple fade in between slides as a transition. That'll be all right. That's fine. Or like, what about text? Am I allowed to do the fade transition there? Just the, it's like a peer? If I want like bullet points? I like this approach where the tip number one, show off your team, food, and atmosphere. It's in bold. Okay. I didn't need it to do dances and swirls and pinwheels. I just have it in bold. So I'll just everyone... keep the dancing to myself. <laughs> Dance while you're giving the presentation. All right. <laughs> no, that's distracting too. <laughs> All these rules. The, you need them. So you need 10 rules to have a powerful PowerPoint. You're right. You're right. <laughs> All right, so before we go, I have a bit of a pro tip. I was doing my own research before we were doing this episode, 
And I learned that you can save PowerPoints in a .ppx format so that when you go to give a presentation, when you open it up, it doesn't go into the PowerPoint editor, it goes right into the presentation, making you stand out, look a little bit more professional. So that was my pro tip for you. All right, that's a wrap. Be sure to like this video. Also comment below, what was your favorite PowerPoint tip out of all 10? And while you're there, subscribe to this channel and ring that bell so you get these episodes first. This is The Journey. We'll see you next time.